All right, what's up, everyone? So we just okay. So we just um, got back from the vegan outreach. Now, if you if you're in France, you got to do baguette. Okay, we got baguettes. Um, we also got about four packets of this seitan from the vegan shop, and uh, we got some chickpeas, salad, a few other things, some tomatoes. I'm gonna make a sandwich, and then um, I've got a speech. There's a fire inside your heart. Let it light up the world. Light up the world. Hello? Hi. This is the best hot chocolate I've ever had. Apparently with this speech, they will be talking into an app to translate and the app will be displayed. The writing will be displayed behind me. There's mostly people who aren't vegan here, which is really good. Like. I don't even think all the activists are here yet. It's a really good turnout already. So my name is Joey Carbstrong. I'm currently traveling around Europe to promote a message of peace, justice and compassion. Now I have a very interesting, colorful, intense past. Thank you. I'm you are? Yeah. Wow. I, I enjoy your tissues. Thank you. Uh, I thank God for your life. Thank you. But uh, the last statement you made, I want to discuss one with you. Because you say that you could have died for a long time, but something, something keeps you alive to do this. To do this. Yeah. My experiences led me to this point, and I believe there was something else at play. Something. I don't know, I've, I, it's almost like it was meant to happen this way. So do you know the thing that keeps you first, that keeps you alive for this purpose? You're saying God, maybe? <laughs> Look, I'm not one to say I know everything. No, I know. But all I know is something happened to me along the way and, and something intervened. But, you know, I'm open. Yeah, and I believe that uh, God keep you for this purpose. And I would never tell anyone that God doesn't exist. That's not for me to say. This is not what this is about. These are questions as to whether a compassionate God, which I believe, you know, God would be, compassionate, loving, would want us to murder his creation in a slaughterhouse destroy his environment and cause the number one killer of his beloved human beings. Just doesn't make sense. We're talking about the most intelligent being, the creator of everything. Doesn't make sense. Because for me, I've tried a lot of time to be vegetarian. It's very difficult, but uh, this message gave me the hope that I can do it, stop eating meat. Yeah. Tell people about the good and for you put the Bible, it's, it's a verse from the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, yeah. read that from verse 17. Yeah. Actually, when God created the world, He didn't ask us to eat meat. Yeah. So we should eat, but we should be vegetarians. Why would a loving God, compassionate God, create animals to feel pain, pain receptors, suffer, feel fear, desire a life of freedom, desire happiness and well being? He created animals like this, but also made them as food to be stabbed to death, to drown in their own blood inside of a, a slaughterhouse does not make any sense. That sounds more like the work of the devil. Genesis 1:29. then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth. They will be your food. The garden of Eden was vegan until they started sinning, eating animals. It doesn't make sense you, you for compassionate God yeah, to yeah. have slaughterhouses. No, 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 no. Makes no sense. But when wickedness came, mm. the men began to eat animals, and animals began to eat men. Mm. So I advise some ideas. Thank you very much. Animals who eat meat, they don't have our conscience yeah. that God's, you know, because and they're in survival situation, we're not. If one were to believe that God created all earth, human beings, God would also have had to give us our conscience here in your heart. Not what's written in the book, it's written in your heart, right here. If you look at a slaughterhouse, 
Watch it, watch the footage, watch what animals go through, even in your backyard farms when they're shot in the head or stabbed in the throat. What do you feel in your heart? Your God-given conscience. If that makes you feel bad, disgusted, upset, that is God talking to you. Why would God create our children, small little children, to be afraid of their own food being produced? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, you can take a child strawberry picking, they wouldn't feel sick and be disturbed. Slaughterhouse workers are suffering PTSD from stabbing animals all day. This is not good. The earth is being destroyed. These are questions you can ask yourself. Don't believe me, just ask yourself these questions. We have gifts, we have abundance, we have choice. You know? But thank you. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Thanks for the work you do as well. Spreading peace and peace and you know. Thank you. Peace, brother. That went well. I feel really pumped after that. Thank you so much, thank you. But I think what we're seeing now is big changes happening worldwide. I mean, you can't deny that. I mean, our efforts are working. Do I think some things could be done better, better than others? Yeah, but would I rather someone do something than nothing? Of course. I mean, we're all learning. No one knows what the best form is until we try it out. Follow your heart anyway. Like, if, if their heart's in the right place and they're doing vegan activism for you know animals, and I'm behind it. What did you think about what happened here in, in Paris? Okay. Uh, with the events? Yeah. At the butchers? Yeah, the with the butchers? Yeah. Yes. Is this the form of activism that I do and think is most effective for me? No. It's whether or not I think that it is justified. If they were dogs hanging from hooks in that window that had been taken from people's yards and butchered and someone sprayed stop killing dogs and smashed a window, what would people be more upset about? The dogs in the window butchered or the spray paint and broken window? I the fact that I went in and filmed and shared a video, no one is safe. Like... That's not true. That's completely false. I've made videos that have converted a thousand people. Now I think about the blow that, that that gives to their economic value of their product. Supply and demand is the driving force behind these industries. They're industries. They're not just um, slaving animals for no reason. They're slaving animals for money. Okay? Yeah. So if you hurt their bottom line, okay, you witness that and it makes you a ferocious activist and you you know and then you influence 10, 20 other people to be activists and persuade another thousand people each. You've, you've made a massive blow to that system. Because for us, you're a vegan, you know about the injustice, you know about the massacre, all right? And you're an animalist, then What's you that start. Mean? Uh, animalist, you know, you got animal, yeah. right? Animalist. So, yeah, yeah, animalist. So you got that word humanity for human people, you know? And we consider every animal, we are all animals. animals. So we consider- Humans as all, well. Yeah. yeah. And we consider that we have to fight for every sentient being on that planet. So animalist is mean we know about the injustice and all the injustices, all right? Mm -hmm. And we decide to fight for the rights of the oppressed persons mm -hmm. on that planet, you know? Yeah. So that's why. I like it. I love it. The message isn't getting through fast enough. So I appreciate all forms of advocacy and whatever gets the message out there. If you prefer the peaceful, um, conversational style route, which I do and I promote, great. If it's more you to do something a little bit more direct action, I'm not gonna stop you, you know? In the face of what's happening to animals, we need us all fighting in our own way. So this is like one of the first years, like we've seen where they, the real message of animal rights is coming to the forefront, ethical vegan message. It's crazy that we live in a society that are more offended with a broken window than actual animals who had suffered and were murdered inside of a slaughterhouse being sold in a shop window.
Thank you. Really nice talking to you. So passionate. You really are. You're really passionate. Thank you. Don't yeah. ever lose that. Thanks, brother. Take care. Take care. <laughs> See you, bro. Peace. Yeah, animalist. Wow, man. Wow. What absolute legends they were, eh? The French activists are so passionate. Real anti-speciesist, like, so much heart and passion and really want to make a change here. And it's just, like, you can really feel it, like, feel it when they're talking to you, like, they, they're like, just keep an eye out for what's going to happen here in France. And I don't know, man, like, I just, like, you can recognize yourself in others you can see your passion in their eyes so when you have determination and courage like that and a belief that anything's possible it's a recipe for changing the world it really is are they always here the police are always here for ad no, the police that are standing right there it's big and it means it's healthy How many churches are we gonna do workshops in, eh? When I found out what was happening to animals and I, I looked at some slaughterhouse footage and seen the struggle in their faces and the desperation in their eyes, I was so angry. I thought, how can we all stand by while this is happening? Why isn't anyone listening to their screams? Why isn't anyone helping? And I was, frustrated.